Welcome back, everyone, to Tia Know, the last news of Europe. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, of course. But right now, we have a little bit of a problem at the beginning of this video because the WRRF, well, they want to straight up kill us. And last time, we had to defend against Vyatka, so let's hope we can get to the front line before they do anything against us. So, Because they're not going to be easy to beat. Let's just be real here. They're not going to be easy to defeat. It's going to suck. And I've already uh, told Tukachevsky over in the WRRF that no, we're not going to do anything like that. You bunch of crazies. So, apparently they got a few days left. Probably literally one or two days. Final warning. Here we go. In response to a refusal of Tukachevsky's initial terms, the front has delivered its final warning. Dark flags fly over the border, visible from our forward positions. Beyond the horizon, surely the Bolshevik armies are preparing themselves for the assault. The latest terms for our state have been broadcast across the lines, clear and plain as day. We are to surrender immediately, dissolve our army, hand over all military equipment to the front, and allow their units to cross the border in order to prepare for our state for integration. Most notably, the provision stating that our governors and generals shall receive amnesty has been revoked. As a critical hour approaches and our final preparations are made, panic deliberations begin behind the lines. Those place Patriotic, less patriotic about our cause begin to migrate southwards away from the path of the invasion if it is to come it is this final darkest hour before the fall storm falls upon us shall we surrender to the red tide or shall we stand strong and hope to overcome it we must bow how would we bow uh oh okay i thought we had a mobile unit here yeah we do where are you guys you're right there that's not bad i'm gonna switch you guys around though why because i want to be able to get over here 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 and circle these th two divisions first that's going to be a bloodbath. Absolute bloodbath. So, hopefully they don't declare war upon us before uh, this expires. Now, that's good. Do we all have divisions on the front? Technically, yes. So, they're moving. We're going to stand for the Republic. Come on. Wait, the president... Soviet. Oh, I think it was down there. Alright. Vologda is still existing. Any day now. Any day now. And we're going to do equipment. Because we're not going to raid. Uh, yeah, come on. I should not have clicked on that button. Wipe the slate clean. Not bad. Against the Tsarists. Build a line. I mean, we could probably use that now. Reclaim our sister republic. Ready the south. That wouldn't be bad to get right now, actually. Better recovery and attack. I'm going to do that one. Against the Tsarists. The collapse of the WRRF brought many different warlords to power, many claiming to be the true Russia. One of the most egregious warlords of them is Vyotka. These Tsars seek nothing but the re-implementation of monarchies in the system that crumbled under its own weight back in 1917. The Vyaktans are directly to our south, which means that they are undoubtedly the biggest threat as of right now to Comey after the WRRF. We cannot afford to let this menace fester on our border, or else we will risk our destruction by these reactionaries. We must seek to exercise uh, these Tsars from Russia once and for all so that we can finally be free from the specter of monarchism. Mm. The storms break. As black flags rise on a border and the declaration of war is received over radio, the first Bolshevik artillery shows have landed within our territory. The war against the front is upon us, and we can only hope that our forces can break the onslaught of the Grand Marshal. Our men shall stand bravely. Until the very end, be it against chemical clouds, uh, armored columns, or infantry surges, and our officers are proud and prepared to fight. With the skill of our army and fate on our side, we shall be the fortress that shatters the West Russian Revolutionary Front for the last time. If we are to fall, let it be as heroes, and if we are to triumph, let us ring eternal in the halls of history, invincible and legendary, together against tyranny. <clears throat> well, I mean, there's not, no point in waiting, so... Alright. At least we're in a defensive war, and we're moving straight on in, hopefully. Do they attack us? No. I'm kind of okay with this, son. I'm kind of okay with it. We've broken over the river, and you're not going to let him move. No, no, no. A thousand times no, and you're going to immediately go right here. They're cut off. They should be getting no supplies. Tomsk Unified Central Siberia. Well, good job, Tomsk. And at least we're not raiding. Uh, oh, they went to war with these guys too. Okay, kind of like that, kind of like that. I don't want to leave the capital, so this is not looking good, but... Hey, if they, even if they come over here... Oh, we got large-scale exercises. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm, it's extremely important to focus on land auction. Holy cow. Even, though, even if you don't win, that's still okay. Come on, can you kill them all faster, faster, faster? Seize the wealth. Look at that. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. As well as March of the Monasteries, as well as Monks in our sight. Well, did they die that quickly? Holy cow. Come on, come on, come on. Win, 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 win. Cut them off. Cut them off. Keep these guys in place. If that's the case, we're going to go up here and do that. Maybe we can encircle them. Maybe. How are they not dead yet? Come on. Okay, we got one of them done. Oh, there goes Hadrish. Poor Hadrish. Ah, we got him before they died. Okay. Woo. Ah. <sighs> 
that's that makes me feel a little better. So we're almost equal now in terms of divisions. We cut off thirteen thousand. You can hold for now. That's totally fine. All right, so we got up there too, huh? Oh, there goes JFK. Well, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Well, if they want to do that, I'm kind of okay with that too. You guys hold. Don't. I said hold, please. Thank you. Well, if you really want to move around, son. Awesome. Black market arms trades increases. It's not necessarily a good thing. No, no, it's not. Uh, what are they doing over here? Excuse me, sir. But can you die now? Well, that's stupid. How do you? How do you? How do you? How does this division move faster than we move in our own lands? Uh, you know what? You're not gonna go that way. You can go here. Two more divisions. God, how are they moving this fast? That makes no sense, man. Man, it makes no sense. Uh, and we got a circle here too, which sucks. Help them out. We should be able to beat them up though, and that's a good thing. Against the Tsarist. But now we're gonna grab ready, ready the South. In order to launch a successful campaign against Vyatka, we need to ensure that we're ready for the war. To this end, we must begin a mobilization effort focused on the South of Komi, so that we have enough troops to actually fight the Tsarists. We will ensure that our troops are able to get into position for this war. Furthermore, we will send our army engineers to Vyatka River in order to find the best location to cross it. Our generals have determined that crossing and securing the Vyatka River will be the critical priority early in the war. So to improvise a river crossing, we must be it would be deadly to our war effort. We must be ready to strike down the Tsarists, in which we're doing this against the WRF, which is a good idea. We're going to try to encircle as many guys as we possibly can, even though we just got encircled ourselves, trying to make it encirclement, so we'll go figure. Good. Death to these evil soldiers. <laughs> Holy crap. Are they going to cut us in half? Hopefully not. They're going back up north, which is good. Alright, we rescued that soldier, which is good, good, good. It's good. You're going you're gonna to attack here. Why? You're going to come here and do that. Mkhun. The wrestler wins in Oslin. We killed off another division. Good job, everyone. And whew, this is going a little better than I thought, but I this is not I don't hmm hmm that's all I can say is hmm go IFVs go 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 make Papa proud. Uh, God dang it, keep these guys in place then. Well, you guys just go there then. If they want to do that, still looking okay. You guys hold for now. I said hold. I said H. Please, H, please. Alright, so you hold. You get over there. You gotta break over the river. You're not you're not coming over here. No, son. No. You're gonna learn your lesson. You're not going over there too. Ready to the south? Good. More attack. Thank you. Uh second October. Build a line. We must have built a line. A war with the Viaco will be anything but easy. It is likely that it'll take time for us to fully breach their lines, and therefore we must construct defenses of our own. We must begin to construct fortifications along the bank of the Viaco River, so that even if we're not able to immediately storm the Tsar's lines, we have a backup plan that will allow us to hold against their armies. This defensive line shall include trenches, bunkers, and observation outposts. Everything needs to be def uh, needs to defend against Viaco if need be. However, this line of defense, while comprehensive, will not be maximized to its full potential, as we need the resources to contribute to the war itself, not just defensive structures. Which is a good thing. So if we can cut these guys off here and then get over there, that'd be really, really good. As you can tell, I'm not really paying attention too much down here. It's kind of a problem, but whatever. Come on, can you move faster, faster, faster? You are literally contributing to the, the lack of the war effort. Come on, go, 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 go. That's okay, you guys you guys got encircled. You dinguses. Uh, if you guys get up there, that'd be pretty good as well. Alright, you wanna do that? Let's do that then. Move, move, move. Why are they why are, why are our guys so slow? Why? Forest and infrastructure? That why why can they move so fast through here? Because it's plans. God dang it, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, you're gonna exterminate these guys. Come on, come on, come on. How, how can they not defeat this stupid little division here? How? How? Come on, come on! You, oh my God, I'm so glad. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry, guys, but this is. I hate the WRF so much. Secure the party, though. Well, for our party maintains a unified and organized front for the rest of the world. Internally, the party is a mess. Competing sub ideologies and fighting in a general lack of cohesion threatens the very foundation of our state. The members of a party should be made to realize who's in charge and how our party is going to be run from now on. All party members are going to have to go through or have to be brought onto the same page regarding 
uh, goals, ambitions, and public relations. Our party must be made into a single, unified front under the General Secretary's leadership. Can you move? Move, 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 move. For the love of God, move your butts. <laughs> You're way too slow. Oh, look at that. Maybe we can circle this guy. Probably not. We'll see what happens. Oh my god, move your butts, come on. The IFVs are just pathetic. Just pathetic. And you got encircled again. I mean, come on, for the love of god, come on. You hold. You know what, screw it, you're going all the way up there. Or no, you just go right there, go right there instead, that's better. You're not leaving, you're not going to leave this stupid place. I swear to God, you're gonna die under the tracks. Sictive, we love. How do we lose Sictive Car? Oh my God, I hate this so much. I hate doing this Comey stuff just because it's so incredibly difficult sometimes. Black arm straight, arm straight increases. That's fine. Kill them off. Kill all these last pieces of garbage off. Fake communists. I swear to God, man. Force the attack. Force them all of them to die. All of them are gonna die. Uh, I don't want to read their events yet, but we'll do reclaim our sister republic. If Comey had a sister, Vologda would be it. Both republics have attempted to be something approaching neutral, and Comey and Vologda relations have never been horrible. Now that we begin our efforts to reunite Russia, it is critical that we attempt to reclaim Vologda in some way. It's certainly possible, given DAF negotiations, that we could peacefully reintegrate Vologda, but a peaceful integration requires both sides to be willing to integrate, something that the Vologdan government may not be willing to do. We must prepare to, in some form, annex Vologda. I don't care about that's uh, like forcing an attack. I really don't. It means nothing to me. Kill every single last one of these guys, though. Every single last one of them. And how do we get encircled again? I hate the WRF. Like, come on. Four divisions and they can still hold out against us? I don't think so. Get in there before... So we can overrun them. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You do not let them live. I'm going to kill these divisions off no matter what happens. How are we losing? They can't pierce us, can they? No, they can't. Yet yeah, they're still holding out perfectly. How? How? These divisions suck, man. Uh, let's get the Sictive Car back. That'd be good. So, the revolution has succeeded. And now communism can be established in the Komi, of course. It now must be determined how to establish communism. And Soslav and Bukharina have different ideas on how to do it. Two low-level politicians were discussing this very question over lunch. Honestly, I think Bukharina has got the right idea. Her passion could serve the future of the party as well, well is what I think. Soslav is kind of creepy, you know? And Alexei said, be said between bites of his sandwich. Alexei Soslav has led us well. He orchestrated our revolution. Why risk it on some untrained idealist? Have you heard of some of the things Bukharina has suggested? She sounds like a total revisionist, exclaimed Maxim. Maxim, you bootlicker if Kaganovich were leading this party, you would follow him. Soslav's way too controlling, and we should go with a more sensible option. She cares about the people in the revolution. She's a natural choice, replied Alexei. Yeah, right. Bukharin's... Bukharin's girl will probably destroy Russia a second time if we let her take charge. She... The end of the lunch break cut off Maxim's comment. The politicians sighed, packed up their barely eaten lunches, and headed back to work. We're out of earshot during all that, right? Right? Oh boy. <laughs> you know, I'll give you credit for that if it comes down to it. Uh, it makes sense why the WRRF is so strong, but it's so annoying to deal with them. So annoying. But look at that, man. That a war sport. That's pretty nice. Are you going to Sictive Car or what? Why are you so slow? Move your legs. I don't care that there's a large river. You know what you do with a large river? You wade through it quickly. You move your butts. Yet, yeah, with little to no organization, they can still hold us out. Go die in a hole, WRF. Force it. I don't care how many men of ours have to die. I really don't. Oh, I got the arsenal back. That's good. Well, kind of. Um, come back down here. You guys take all the victory points. Actually, are these court yet? They are court, huh? Lucky for them, then. Oh, well. Don't give them peace. Uh, trading increases. That's fine. Kill off that militia division first. Tusk. Good. Cut that division off. And you guys are heading all over the place. Man, your divisions are so weak, though. Reclaim our sister republic, which is good. And then we'll do a matter of unity. Maintaining unity within the party is the utmost importance. It is a weakness of Bukharin's communist party that ultimately led to his downfall. If he had been a stronger leader and kept the party together, we may have been we may have won. Keeping party unity within the party itself is vital for keeping the political fu system functioning and is a necessary component of Lenin's ideology. We must endeavor to further solidify our power base within the party and ensure that a continued political hegemony. The party will be kept unified at all costs. 
Can we just win? Come on, guys. We have a capital back, which is great. But, Jesus Christ, the WRF is so strong. How can you not win here? You went up there, but not down here. How? They can't pierce us. They're literally just... Oh, they declined. They're literally just stupid militia divisions. No, 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 you're gonna hold. You gotta hold, 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 hold. How many more victory points do we have to take from them? Too many. Oh, good lord, this is not looking good. We keep moving in, we're gonna destroy this one division. I mean, we're gonna win here probably, but my goodness, it is sucking so hard right now. Uh, Vologda declines up. Even though some had voiced their concerns on the military government of Vologda and the possible reluctance to join us, we decided to take the chance and make an open offer since they had nothing to lose. But it seems that in the end they were right. As we they wish to maintain the neutrality, Vologda has explicitly refused to surrender to a communist regime. As such, a war is our only option. We must show no mercy in destroying the anti-communist junta to our west. Lacking the ability to field a large, powerful, and well-supplied army, they will not be able to resist effectively. And aside from the insignificant resistance that might linger on by those led by those who are not loyal, they will be dealt with as a threat from a very within a very short amount of time. At least that's what the High Command claims, thus we can no longer delay the evasion of Vologda to arms, comrades. Well, not yet. Oh, this is... What is going on here? How are we... I'll be honest, what is going on? Like, we're not getting pierced, we have plenty of armor, and it's militia division. We can't win against these guys? They've got to be doing, like, force defense or something. This makes no sense. Um, yeah, I'm going to take you guys, all of you guys, do that because you're, you're looking pretty weak there, not going to lie. Why are you stopping? Alright, well, we have one division here. What the hell? No, stop. I wanted this one. Okay, now they're dead. That's good. A matter of unity. Uh, an orthodox front would be nice and all, but a part against the puppet master. Through there are many in the party who romanticized the early years of the Soviet Union before the Germans invaded, must be acknowledged that orthodoxy failed us in the past. Bukharin didn't fail because he followed Marxist Leninist principles well enough, he failed because he followed them too strictly. If Sislav is to become the next general secretary of the Communist Party in Komi, then that will be our doom. He will lead us down the same path of failure we already tried. No, we must instead forge a new path, our own path. The more adapt members of the party must start consolidating their own block to oppose Sislav's influence. Good. Good. Uh, at this point, I'm going to just take you guys up here. Uh, do you have any upgrades? No. That sucks. Take that out before anything else can happen. Go, 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 go. Take everything they have and leave nothing behind. Because we literally are running out of, like, men and soldiers. Uh, hold for now. Just hold. That's all I want you to do. No, no, no. Why did you leave a line? What the hell is that about? Holy crap. No, get over there. Holy cow. <laughs> what? Why did they leave? Why? There's no reason for leaving yet, son. There's no leaving. No, 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 no. Well, at least we got our uncles. That's nice. Um, Ukta. I guess we'll go for Ukta next. Ukta, 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 Ukta. Well, at least we can win there, hopefully. And I apologize if I'm sounding a little ragey. It's just like, sometimes, I just question what what's going on here. It just doesn't make sense sometimes, man. It really doesn't. Oh, seriously, I don't like it. Capitulate these guys take so long. Uh... Uh, back to Guinea in Vuktil. Vuktil. How is Plesik the capital now? What the heck? Which means... Okay, okay, thank goodness. I'm, I apologize if I got a little angry there or anything or like ragey. It, it's such a pain in the butt to take out the WRF. It's, they're ridiculously strong. And it makes sense. Like I said, it makes sense why they're very, very strong. But boy, is it annoying. Alright. Oh, Vyatka is suffering against those guys down south. Hopefully with the... Oh, we need more manpower. Oh, God. A party against the Puppet Master. Um, uh, attrition preparations, a second October. We could go to war them. Actually, they're suffering against the Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah, actually, no, they're at war now. Or do we want to do Vologda first? Neutrality is suicide. No mercy for splitters. A peaceful option would be nice. Welcome, comrades. Um, I think we will go to war with Vologda first. Because even though it would be easier to get, go against Vyatka, then the Brotherhood or Samara could end up, you know, fighting us at, as well sooner, and I want time to prepare and consolidate our forces. So, neutrality is suicide. Why should we enter negotiations with traitors? These Vologda dudes sold out Russia for the sake of their so-called neutrality. Even if they agree to peaceful integration, who's to say that they won't betray us at the worst possible moment? Besides, the neutrality has only made themselves servants of the fascist cause, and therefore not the type of people we want involved with our government in any capacity. We must prepare troops and conquer Vologda and liberate the people from these fascist servants. Ooh. 
I want more loot though. And we are lacking so many things. Holy cow. Do we just get another military factory? One, two, three, four. Yes. No, we didn't. God dang it. God hope we can core this stuff fast enough. Because our soldier is not looking very good. But then again, how strong is Voluptan? Ultimatum from Onega. Seriously, Onega? Seriously? They have up to six divisions. But probably they're more equipped than we are right now. Well, if we do this successfully, we will be able to get some more guns. So, come on, let's do that first. Look at that. Zidanov has a uh, influence, even though he's dead. Well, if you'd like to read about this, please, eh, you know, I'll read it. Yuri Andropov was nothing if not a smart man. He reasoned with himself with some satisfaction. His son, John Bukharina, was certainly a crack one. Heck, she had risen far beyond his expectations. Sislav hadn't seemed to worry about her growing beyond control, but Yuri certainly had, and who was right in the end. A smirk crossed his lips as he charged on. It had been a very productive meeting with several prominent revisionists, as Sislav would have called them. Yuri would have called them smart people. He wasn't exactly a bleeding heart when he came to how best implement socialism, but he was a smart man. These people were, whether he personally liked it or not, the future. Bukharina, heck, even Zaydanov to some extent. They were the ones who sometimes were going to lead the party to the future. Not Sislav. Though they may have initially distrusted him as a hardliner, they certainly didn't forget tonight. Or after tonight. Andrew Pov chuckled to himself. The game was afoot and certainly intended to pick a winning side. we got to make sure we got enough organization because we are not going to back down so easily. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. But I should stop. Alright, come on. Are we defending? Are we moving? Or what's going on? Man, oh man. Oh, that needs to be great. We got a couple more rifles, which is something we could really, really, really use right now. Oh boy. Oh boy. But the officers of the revolutionary front. <clears throat> now let's take a look. We are the libertarian socialists, so. With the reclamation of Akangos and the end of the Revolutionary Front, we are now presented with a potential opportunity to exploit. Many of the officers of the Front, high and low, are now under custody, scattered between various prison camps and detention centers, uh, or detention facilities. Hold on, I did notice that something is wrong here, like, uh, okay. It has been suggested by several of our senior officers that many of them would be am amendable to service within our own armed forces in exchange for pardons given as part of the general amnesty. There's no denying that they've been very useful talents, especially as it regards the doctrines of deep battle and large-scale operations. However, their reliability, political and otherwise, has been called into question, and many within our government advise it against allowing them to serve, even if they should be, so be pardoned. Others consider them outright criminals and advise that they should be left in prison until such a time as the rehabilitation can be considered, should it ever be. Regardless of choice, the decision must be made. What should we be done with them? Pardon and commission them. Their skills will be useful. Pardon them, but keep them out of the military. They are unreliable. And leave them in prison. Well, as much as I want to do that one, I'm not really sure about libertarian socialism. I don't know about that too much, but it seems like we'd probably forgive them pretty quickly. So, maybe, maybe. Actually, maybe not. Even when I played as Salvin, he was like, mm, maybe not. And if we do this, is there a way for them to backstab us? But well, we're going to go with that route for now. No mercies for splitters. The log does nothing without a, but a splitter today, and must be conquered. Our troops are in place, our supplies are ready for us to march against Vologda. We will conquer this so-called neutral state and liberate people from the chains that are bound in. The time for war against Vologda is now. Nice. Very good. Now, they did help us with the guns, maybe slightly, but not very much. Um, at this point, uh, can we buy man pads? Man pads? Well, we could try it, so. Yeah, we're not looking too good here. Uh, this is not going to be easy battle, but hopefully with our vehicles we can move around quickly enough. We can circle somebody here. Oh, wait. Again. Okay, look at that. Okay, we have another division then. Alright, so for now, I'm not going to make another division until our soldiers are pretty much well stocked. Because the war against the WRF is always incredibly bloody. Incredibly bloody. We need more manpower too. Oof. If we could core their territory fast enough, that'd be really, really good. But no mercy for splitters. We'll do attrition preparations. The Vyadka army is one of the most powerful in Western Russia, and, are, and a war against them risks the possibility of devolving into a long and bloody struggle. If this is to happen, we do not want our troops to starve, as that is how one loses what war. To prevent this outcome from occurring, we must begin to stockpile supplies. Armories will be expanded, and food will be preserved to the best of our ability, so that our army can survive a protracted war. We'll also make sure that our soldiers have access to adequate clothing depending on the climate. Even if the war with the Vyadka lasts for a long time, our efforts ensure we will come out on top. Very good. And... Uh, max planning is pretty good. This one's not nearly as good, but it's still not bad. Concurrent frontal assaults? Sure, why not? No mercy for splitters? Um, you know what? We're probably not ready for this, honestly, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. If we can circle at least a division at a time, that'd be kind of nice. They do have a motorized division down there, which is not very good, but whatever. Oh, look at that. 
All right then. Well, the logged up. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure where their victory points are. Let's see. Well, at least one of these divisions is somewhat strong. That's nice. Come on, beat them up so we can get rid of them. Just kind of waiting. And good job, guys. Good job. Boom, boom, boom. Costarama. No, sir. No, sir. Not today. Wow, our soldiers. Oh, we got their soldiers. Oh, it's only one and two. Oh, wow. No wonder it was so weak. One and two infantry battalions and military police for that division. Um, how about these guys? Oh, uh, no, that looks like a pretty normal division, honestly. Uh, okay. Just cut them off if you can. And let the armor just kind of go in and, and kill them off. Supreme Soviet, Divine Mandate, everyone's killing each other. Ha! Ah, a normal day in the run of shenanarchy, isn't it? Oh, we can't do that one yet. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so then. Connections of Zidanev. The foundations of society. The voices of the people. Mm, that's not bad. I like the recovery rate and stability, but how about the ambition of Bukharina? Yeah, I'll probably go with that one. Svetlana Bukharina, once the newly elected firebrand of the Komi National Assembly, has slowly begun to rise up in the Communist Party's ranks. It's no surprise that the daughter of the last general secretary of the CCP, or CCCP, has found intense popularity among the working class of Komi. It is a surprise, however, to see Bukharina def deftly navigate the ossified bureaucracy of the KPK. The party is not done to change when a descendant of one of the greatest revolutionaries in history seeks power. It would be insane to stop them. Bukharina's talent for the governance and her obvious charisma in both one-on-one -on -one meetings and mass speeches will aid in the party's march towards the workers' liberation. Liberation. This ambitious woman will be our next candidate. Very, very good. Ah, you lost because you're weak. Which, I mean, I'm not going to fault him for that. I literally pretty much suicided them in to attack, so. Uh, you know, def defeat their divisions first. That's, that's probably a better idea. Just going to take all the territory first. Let's just go ahead. Uh, that's good. You know what? And start going to destroy them. Black market order failed, that's pretty normal. And a word to the Soviets. It says something about Bukharina's law for the worker that her base is composed of the self-organized, directly elected Soviets that dot the Republic and low-level Algerian and industrial institutions regulating much of the Republic's industry. However, this is not to say that she does not enjoy broad support, considering that these Soviets and institutions are the primary low-level institutions governing local life in the Union. Unfortunately, the suggestions of the Soviets and other minor institutions often go unheard in the party ideological program. To ignore the organs of the people is to not represent the people, which goes against the party's ideology in and of itself. Bukharina will directly appeal to the Soviets and integrate their suggestions into the ideological program. Almost have a voice, from the general secretary to a singular peasant. Yes. Ah, uh, it's going to do that too. Thank you. Go in, go in. That's a really bad division that I have. I mean, my divisions, our divisions are just not very good, but they're not terrible. Come on. Oh. Uh, you guys just had to start for Kostrama. The faster we can core this up, the better. Oh, scavenge loot. Yes, please. Do we core this up already? Um, reunification. No. No, Russian development and uh, we must have courted already. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I, I can't tell, huh? All right, Kostrama's ours. We got him, my friends. We got him. So much easier than a WRRF. Holy cow! Oh baby. Uh, actually, I don't. We do have to take these guys out first. I'm a little worried about Samara though. I really don't want to fight them, but fight them we must. Can I loot some some people? Technically, we don't have to read this one, so I'm going to save this one for later, maybe. Um, yeah. We'll probably do Inspired Patriots. Eh, that's not bad. Evaluation of Party Policy. Okay, but that's a nice. 2nd October. All efforts and preparations have succeeded, and the time to begin the war against the Tsars has arrived. We will not allow monarchism to once again take root in Russia. Our troops will cross the Vyaka River and begin the war against Vyaka. Just as our comrades did in 1917, we will strike down the Tsar from his throne. Good, good, good. Meeting with the workers. Hello, Comrade Bukharina, Yuri said, excited in his voice. I'm, as I'm sure you know, me and my comrades are here from the local unis, or unions. I'm from the metal workers. Mikhail here is from the miners. He gestured to the right of Mikhail, and Anna's with the teachers. They all shook Bukharina's hand by, one by one. Well, it's very nice to meet you all three, uh, Bukharina said, smiling. Let's get down to business, shall we? They all sat down at the table. 
You all want to know if the union's best interest to support me. Well, I will ensure that you have a right to strike, firstly. Second, the unions will have power in the Congress of Soviets, and the Congress of Soviets will have more authority and power than it has before, so I'm not going to give them a ceremonial position. Bukharina continued speaking, explaining to the representatives how she would support the unions and the workers. Well, comrade, I'll be honest. We've talked to people from different parts of the party, but none of them seem to have been convincing as you. Well, while we'll soon need to talk to the rest of our unions, I'm confident they'll also support you, Yuri said. Anna and Mikhail nodded in agreement. Bukharina smiled at them. Thank you, comrades. Oh, I'm just worried about Samar, because Samar can be very difficult to take out, because they're so low down here. Oh, so low. Do we seriously court? We must have ser seriously court them. Oh, so not good. Everyone hates Vyaka right now. It's like everyone hates Chris, but everyone hates Vyaka. They at least have... We have 20 factories, so at least we're making some more guns. Actually, what's our stockpile right now? We're good, very good on guns. Look at that. I love it. Support equipment. LBJ has been inaugurated. He's often inaugurated. Either him or Bennett's usually inaugurated in my campaigns now. Which isn't bad. Just, I don't know. I'm like, I'd like to see... Maybe RFK. Maybe see if RFK again sometime. What's to be expected? Second... Uh, yeah, if we can move fast enough, we can do really, really well, but consolidate our territory. Our rapid gains of the new lands, whether through peace or war, have left the administration overextended. While we have theoretical control over a lo fairly large chunk of western Russia, the fact is that there are so many pockets within our territory that operate freely, possibly even against Komi. We must rectify the situation now before we march against the rest of the warlords. More funding and manpower will be devoted to not only keeping the peace everywhere in our lands, but also to our new regional administrations. With the increase of workers and money, the new administration should be able to begin the process of truly consolidating the new lands, bringing them thoroughly under our control. Alright, at this point, uh, we're probably not going to be able to get these guys done. Uh, someone else is going to probably have to do that. So don't even fight them yet. Just come over here first. And depending on where our motorized or, you know, our IFEs, our weak IFEs are. Oh. If you capitulate them, what does that do for us? Take all the victory points. Maybe we can get them first. Oh, look at that. Uh, agriculture methods, please. Thank you. 43, 5, 100. Not bad. Come on, I know it's a river. I know it's a river. But move those bodies. Bodies were made to move. And divisions to kill. Nice. Ah, god dang it. Oh, Samara got it. Oh, that's not good. Um, Well, if that's guess I'm going to do something like this then. That's really not good. So everyone's going to hate these guys then. Which is fine with me. Totally, totally fine. Consolidate our territory. Uh, replenish the armory. Yeah, that'd be really good to do. Holy crud. Oh, we get factories? Oh, I gotta do satisfy the peasantry, though. The majority of people in Russia are peasants. While there are those who still support us, there are also those who have been corrupted by reactionary propaganda. We must show the peasants that we are a benevolent force, and not a specter that seeks to ruin their lives. We'll accomplish this task by providing the peasants with the modern equipment that we can, so that their lives become easier. Furthermore, we'll ensure that the peasants have access to modern amenities and methods of communication, improving their standards of living. Hopefully, these efforts will show the rural people of Russia that we seek to better their lives, not cast them into heck. Which is a good thing. Next, technology will be done in three weeks, which isn't too bad. This gives us, I guess, a little bit more time to force the course off. And, oh, they're fighting them immediately. Oh, we gotta, oh, god, I wanna go to war with these guys badly, as fast as possible. This is not gonna be easy either. Oh, boy. Uh, let's grab some of this. Ensure industrial effectiveness. In a conquest, we managed to seize control of a large amount of factories, all in varying states of readiness. While well, we've been able to get some of them up and running again, <clears throat> there's so many that need to be properly restored and restarted. We must focus on our efforts on ensuring that these factories can not only function, but function productively. We'll also ensure that these new factories have workers who understand the powers of communism as to prevent any saboteurs from wreaking havoc. I just hope that the Aryan Brotherhood can last as long as possible. Please, 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 please last, last, kill, oh, please, kill that division off. Please kill it off. Kill them, kill them, kill them. I'd rather fight the Aryan Brotherhood, because, honestly, they're weaker than, uh, Samara, at least in my opinion. Uh, let's take a look. But the Tsar on trial, 6 to 10 divisions, 7 to 13. They do have motorized though, 2,000 manpower. No, oh god, you have no manpower, that's not good. <clears throat> but replenish the armory, which is good. Our recent wars have left our weapon supplies dangerously low, like our manpower, and it's clear that we need to restock or risk supply shortages. We must audit all the captured equipment and see what can be of use to us. Furthermore, we need to start up new weapons factories and restart the old ones, so that we don't run out of ammo or rifles at a critical juncture. <clears throat> Well, this does require us to move our military to a defensive position for now. It is necessary to show that we can succeed in conquering the warlords. Good. We get all the good stuff that we need. Good, 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 good. Give you more defense and breakthrough. I love defense and breakthrough so much. Please hold out, Aryan Brotherhood. Come on, did you destroy that division? Please don't get encircled and die here. Please, 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 please. Uh, I don't remember doing a black market order right now, but okay. Come on, guys, you gotta hold out. 
I don't know why they just went to war immediately with each other, though. But we got to relocate the party next. Once we, of course, finish replenish the armory. Support equipment, anti-tank, tow artillery is going to be so nice to get. I'll do something else here. Oh, scavenge for loot. Yes, please. We'll continue doing that. And relocate the party. <clears throat> with the recent conquest, multiple, pe multiple people in the party have advocated for the relocation of the capital from Siktivkar to Rykov. While Rykov is a more central location, which could allow us to govern easier, the fact of the matter remains that re relocation of the party is a costly endeavor. We would have to s stage such a re relocation so that our government couldn't be wiped out in a single blow and the capital would be closer to our enemies, however. There are many who argue that despite the cost, the benefits of moving to Rykov would be immense in the long run. We must resolve this debate now before we must direct resources into more wars against other warlords. Oh god, please hold out, Aryan Brotherhood, as long as possible. Uh, but this is actually, I'm really glad the devs put that in there, because we really need to get more equipment. Alright, so our army's probably looking a little better now. Up to, oh, okay, it wasn't them then. Okay. Oh god, that, they got encircled in two places. Oh, it's not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. Fulfilling our promises. Whether we struck a deal with the front, an agreement was made to begin the process of integration once Vyatka, Vologda, and Gaini were handled. Now the military is defeated, and the time has come to begin reintegration. But we all hardly expect for the front to follow through on the, on their end, although there are few who believe that they will sell us out. In any case, let us reach out to the WRF to begin the process of integration. What? What? Um, okay. Well, these guys, these things are great. I'm going to go immediately for more artillery. Uh, that is not good. How many divisions do they have? Are they still coring this stuff? At least they're losing manpower. So if they're out of manpower, which is very, very good for us. Six to ten divisions. Eh, an ultimatum from... Are you kidding me, Onega? Are you kidding me? Why? Fulfilling our promise. Okay, so that actually did bypass. So we can do the Rikov Conference. We get political power. Integrate the generals of the WRF... WRRF shall be promoted to command positions and merge the bureaucracies. We know there's a West Russian United Front. We will formally unify or the backup plan. The front is not long for this world. Cut radio lines. Take down the despots. Um, as much as I don't want to do this, I technically did want to go like do a pact with them and stuff like that. But they went to war with us, so and we technically they're already dead. So yeah, integrate the generals. I don't want to be known as the West Russian. I don't want to be known as a West Russian United Front. I guess that's okay. Yeah, I guess we we are we will give them some rehabilitation and stuff so they can join our ranks. But I guess we'll do the Rikov Conference, I suppose. Um, well, actually, requires fulfilling our promises. I don't think we, we're allowed to do this, but we'll try it. As expected, the Front is on is willing to begin integration talks. While both sides agree in integrating, the details of this unification need to be hashed out. Therefore, we should host talks between the Front and Komi in the city of Rykov in order to ensure integration happens smoothly. It is generally agreed upon that Komi will lead the civilian side of the government, while the Front will integrate into and lead the Red Army. With luck, integration will happen smoothly, and we will be ready to smash the rest of the Russian warlords. Okay. Oh, okay. They just it all it just all bought passes. Okay. Well, if you want to read about these, please go right ahead. As well as merge bureaucracies. Well. Incorporate Unk Unk Hungusk. Despite the attempts of the front, the Germans were able to successfully bomb the far north very heavily. Many of the roads and ri railroads are in ruins, and the towns and cities need to be rebuilt in order to be of any use. It is therefore prudent that we send economic aid northwards. This economic aid will be focused on our Hungusk Oblast, as there is a potential for development and was bombed the most. We shall build new factories, restore the roads, and modernize the houses. This economic development should allow for the north to quickly become a productive part of the country, allowing for us to have a stronger economic base as we move against the rest of the warlords and a new capital. The recent victories allowed us to strengthen our presence in West Russia and to bring order to the distant territories that were caught by anarchy and tyranny right after the departure of the Red Army as more and more hostile territories are pacified and transferred under the protection of the Soviet power. We are now able to reconsider our position in the region. The proposals are coming from the various officials to relocate our residents, or residents to uh, Rykov as it was known under the counter-revolutionary leadership of Yatka. The provisional capital, oh my apologies about this, of uh... Siktiv Kar, now purged out of bourgeois and fascist elements that overwhelmed the city in the last or later years, has served the Soviet government well and its capabilities come as a great aid in more than desperate times, but as our state outside situation but as our outside situation plays more in favor, we have an opportunity to move our capital to the central region of West Russia, thus allowing to entrench ourselves in a more comfortable position. Stability moves Oh, we move our capital to Vyatka. Oh wait, hold on. Hold on. Um what does that do? Do we get Vyatka then? Um, okay, so this doesn't go well. I'll reload the game, but you know what? What happens? Okay, no, our capital becomes Arkhangos. That kind of sucks. 
Oh man, I was hoping for some like a free like victory point or something. Oh, why, Dabs? Why? I just wanted to do stuff that was sly and not good for them. Well, that sucks. I would have kept a sick if I knew that was going to happen, but whatever. Mm, okay, cool. And then an ultimatum to. Oh, these are all going to. A lot of these are going to bypass. Uh, get. Oh, uh, well, technically they have no manpower right now. The faster we go to war with them, the better. Since they do have a lot of non-core territories, hopefully. So, end the ROA. I want to do this immediately. The ROA are nothing but collaborators. They may speak of Russia and re 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 reunifying Russia and freeing it from communism, but the fact remains that they're willingly sided with the people who caused this era of warlordism. A time has come to destroy Vlasov's ilk once and for all, so Russia can be free from these traitors. Which is, we have to do it as fast as possible. Which, I mean, there's literally nothing else we can do here. So if you like to read about this one, please go right ahead. As well as an ultimatum to Gorky. As well as eliminate the syncretists. Who oh, they just fine gets us. Yeah, it's fine. Euthanize the abomination <laughs> and end the Islamists. Which makes sense. Good. Oh, the resolution passes. Oh, Uncle Sam's Horizon Ernest. Nice. Um as long as they don't core this. They haven't cored it yet, which is very, very good. Wipe out the fractured state. Oh, they're actually going to go to war with us first. Uh, you know what? Deploy them early. We need the divisions out. Okay, well, I guess we're in a defensive war, which is good for us. So, uh, go and just come down here, maybe. Keep these guys in place. If you can, come down here as well and go that way. The goal is to encircle and destroy. Black rocket order failed. Kind of sucks, but whatever. I'm not going to move into here because that's a lot of resistance and I don't want to deal with that. So, you guys keep these guys like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Move, 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 guys. You're doing a great job. We just got encircled ourselves, which is god-awful. We want the Gorky Tank plant, though. Come on, move, 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 move. Good. Oh, we have another focus we can do. Nice. Ah, oh, go back up here. That's fine. In, in Star Wars, Soviet patriotism. I ask you, as a humble citizen of this great union, are you, should you, be proud of the Soviet citizens? Uh, it is not an unworthy question. We do not live in a perfect society. Poverty, hunger, greed still remains. We should not judge a society by its current conditions. To do so would paint every unit in history as a dystopia without opportunity for change. We should judge a society by its ideals, the ideas that help tie us together, that marches forward towards a greater future. The fuel for hope, the engines of change. Would we not live in subjugation if we do not value freedom or liberty? Even if our freedom has not been perfected? Will we not live divided and broken without our solidarity, powerless of the machinations of the ruling class? Will we not live poor and destitute without places to call home or families to love without our ambition for the true egalitarianism? Will we not live in the directness of ignorance, the fear of the unknown without our cosmopolitan worldly nature? These ideals, the ideals of the Soviet citizen, are surely something to be proud of. The act of being a Soviet citizen is an act of bravery in a world of illiberalism and authoritarianism. We live in one of the most truly great societies of modern history, as one of the few that never ceases marching forward for our ideals. Good. Alright, uh, we definitely have more divisions than them, and this is looking at like a giant piece of messiness. Uh, you guys get down here, just encircle and destroy them. That'd probably be for the best. Okay, we save one division first, and I'm going to save the other ones and get these guys down here so we can encircle and destroy them. Um, you guys get down there. Anything else that we should really be aware of? No. Once a court, we'll take it over, but I'm not going to touch that resistance. No, thank you. And we just got encircled. Are you kidding me? Well, you guys get down there. Go down there. Alright, so the trucks haven't arrived yet. Okay. Okay, well, whatever. That's fine, that's fine. Kill these few divisions off, that's fine. Don't attack while they're over the river. Oh, actually, you can up on here too. Fine. Alright. Oh, crap. That is not good. Beat him up. And then evaluation of party policy. A key moment has arrived in party's history. The party's yearly evaluations arrive. Historically, the party's evaluation has either been a bellwether of change or an early sign of the continuing reign of orthodoxy. With Bukharina on the rise and reformists ascending in the party's hierarchy, it may seem to be a certain victory for reformists, but orthodox evaluators still dominate much of the party's organs. Certainly, many of Bukharina's methods have proved effective, but the old guard watches carefully for the signs of instability or progress gone too far. The question remains, shall orthodoxy take hold once again, or will the reformists take ascendancy? Good question. Very good question. Uh, go right there. Oh boy, this is a giant mess. Oh baby, that's a giant mess. 
Keep going down. Um, <clears throat> we're probably gonna get circled doing this, but whatever. God dang, you just go to perm or whatever. Get down to Mara. And then go there. Come on, truckies. You got this. You got this. And, oh, nice job, guys. Wait, let's, let's at least kill Gorky first. Good. No, don't leave. How are you losing? You must be getting encircled or something. Good. Well, you can do that if you really want to, but you're not going to live to see the day. So, the light of day. Thank you for playing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, look at that. Division. We're going to get encircled, like, so many different times. It's not even funny, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Is this cord yet? Oh, it's not. Oh, my gosh. That's so bad. Help out. And we did it. Nice. You guys get over here. Evaluation of the party policy, passing the bar, and the early history of the Komi Communist Party, reformists were sidelined at every opportunity. Anyone seeking real changes within the party and the large community were not welcome to speak their thoughts. Fortunately, the party has changed. The reformists, after years of campaigning, protesting, and maneuvering, have passed the bar. The party as a whole now approves our actions, even if the ideology is not yet the official ideology of the party or even the one back to the most popular support. The Orthodox faction are now the ones being sidelined for the first seven years. <clears throat> this development. It is a monumental point for the development of socialism in Komi. The road is long, but the path is clear. Now reformists must march on. That's not to say that there will be no opposition. The remnants of the orthodox faction still remain as a pot potent threat to changes in the system. And they are enraged that their once dominant ideology is no longer ascendant. But it's opposition that we are well sure that we can defeat. Good. The Assembly. I'm kind of tired of reading all these events. Or just, not even reading them, just having these events while we're focused much, 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 much more, uh, more warfare. But, the uh, Assembly of the Communist Party of the Komi Republic is in session. Many of the delegates, may delegates who wish to set the agenda of today's Congress please rise. And like clockwork, Bukharina and Soslav are rising. Already the speaker can tell what the topic will be. For the, the Komi's Republic's leftists have only really dis discussed one topic in a hundred variations since the split with the Union. Who will take the reins of power now that the left is in control? What can the Komi Republic do, surrounded as it is by fragments of the socialist dream and the tyranny of generals who beat the people with its shreds? Or its shards? Is there really any purpose of fighting for the revolution in a place that seems to have become numb to it? It is only really one question. The question of whom, of all who have their lives work torn from under them. Who then, and what next? What is, in other words, to be done? The inaugural opening speech is as good as a platform to advance the agenda as any, even if the speaker has no real hope of this shouting match will turn out differently from the others. Even so, it is her formal duty to ensure the decorum of at least attempted. And now she must make a choice. She calls on the speakers to state their points. Bukharina opens by pointing out the endurance of the Union shall be dependent upon the common worker experience and the benefits of socialism. And the proposes a discussion of workplace democracy in the Republic. General Secretary Suslov, in his usual dry manner, proposes an alternate solution. The centralization of the workplace unions to the party mandate, to bring them directly into the ideological process, it's, it's subtle, controlling, and depressingly relevant. <laughs> Please go forward. Let Bukharina speak. Yes, yes, yes. Let, let the woman speak. She speaks truth and good thoughts. Are you kidding me? Get out of my way. Get, screw these guys. Uh, if you'd like to be the factory captured, please go right ahead. That's actually really good for IFEs, though. How can we not win here? What is wrong with you guys? I'll go down here and do that. This must be their, like their super special forces or something. Yeah, this is a giant mess. Oh, we actually lost a division. Look at that. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. Um, instead of going there, just go focus here. Go to Samara if you can. Oh! <gasps> For military factories! Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times yes. Oh, we're gonna need way more guns first. Hold on. Come on, come on. Hey, you got him. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Pats on the back once this war's over. Better in disagreement. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign playing as a Russian warlord. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you see this? They're going to have to die. And die they will. You are not leaving, son. You will die a traitor's death. Passing the bar. 
and which is the way of the Soviets. There's a new path for the Communist Party. This path is grounded in the people, built from the ground up. No longer will the leader of the Presidium and the Politburo ignore the wishes of other people and spit in the faces of Lenin. Bukharin offers this new path, a bright future for the party. Bukharin's way has a centerpiece in the traditional Soviets. The peasant councils that the old Bolsheviks built upon. The Soviets are the mouthpiece of the people. And there are numerous opinions and divisions. Almost every Soviet, however, is united in their support for Bukharina. She proposes elevating them to the previous level of prominence. This massive base is invested in its powers and grassroots support for Bukharina. She is a people's candidate, and so she is a people's. Good. How are you losing? Eh, look how weak they are, that's why. Come, are you going to win or not? Come on, move. Move your butts. Move, 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 move. How do we get encircled again? Seriously? Come on. Get your butts down here and move, move, move. God, letting the AI just do whatever they want is such a bad idea. Please kill them off, please. They're not that strong. They're really just not that strong. Alright, we got the plant. That's nice. We got some better artillery. We just should be able to hit just a little bit harder. Support weapons. Let's grab some more of this. Thank you. Come on, take some out. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're probably going to lose that division, though. Got to get up there. That's good. Get down here as fast as possible. Black market available. Please, can we just capitulate them? Please, 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 please. Oh, we did! Nice! Oh, my goodness. That was so bad. Oh, we got it, my friends. Go ahead and start integrating everything here, though. That's so bad. But we're starting to run out of warlords to kill. So I guess Onega's next. So I apologize if I was ragey earlier or anything like that, but Don once more. Welcome, comrades. Bukharina was ushered into the factory, barely having time to take off her hat. She looked at the wall, seeing a large red banner hang. Oh, that was very nostalgic. She thought of the time she visited factories as, her, as a child with her father, always seeing a red banner. It's nice, eh? Bukharino snapped out of her nostalgia by what seemed to be the foreman. I'm the foreman here. My name's Andra. Andre. Sorry for a bit overwhelming. They're all excited to see you. The workers here all see you as the future of Russia. No worries, comrade, Bukharina said. She shook her hand, shook his hand, smiling. You know, I met Lenin once. It was a highlight of my year, to be honest. But you know something? I think I'd be happier with you in charge over Lenin, comrade. Your ideas reigned, reignited the fire for socialism within me. Thank you. Bukharina felt overwhelmed, knowing that someone truly loved her as a leader that much. It was one thing to see people from the dis distance supporting her, but hearing personal stories always inspired her. Ah, look at me, taking up your time. There's the rest of the factory for you to meet. Bukharina laughed. Uh, before continuing onwards into the factory, the red dawn illuminates the downtrodden workers. The rest is ours... Uh, oh, we have to finish the political matters first. Okay. Reestablish the Congress of Soviets. Before one can work through the nitty-gritty of the governance, they must establish the foundations of the democratic rule in the days of the CCCCP, or the triple, quadruple, infinite CCCs, Ps. The Congress of the Soviets was a legislature of the people representing everyone from Belarus, uh, Belarus to the Tajik Republic. Reestablishing the Congress and the turning Comey's legislature into a bicameral affair will offer proper representation and further advance to socialism. Surely it's just a coincidence that the Soviets are the state institutions who support Bukharina's policies the most. That is not to say that the Presidium will be modified in any way, but the Congress of Soviets will elect only representatives and local of local Soviets, largely supporters of Bukharina. Good. So that's coming along. We don't really need to do this because Soslav's influence is very, very low already, so... And we're going to scavenge for loot and be ready for Onega trying to kill us off. As we read the next focus next. In the name of liberation. Social liberation. Liberation. The unshackling of, for, of the minorities. As of chief importance in Bukharina. For millennia, the women have been oppressed by men in a horrid cycle of sexism that never seems to end. Without social slap, it is not, it is not unthinkable that it, all women could still be relegated to the position they once occupied in pre-modern life. The rise of Bukharina and the Communist Party has shown the power of Marxist thought to overcome her repre reprehensible social norms. For the first time in history, a woman seems poised to take formal control of the Republic. However, the oppression of women is not the only form of social oppression under the Republic. The disabled, those with mental and physical disabilities, are shunned from their families and find it difficult to find work. People belonging to the Komi ethnic group find it di difficult to advance in career fields and face a greater deal of inequality within with the Russian Brethren. While most of the population are staunch believers in Orthodox Church's teachings, there are a few thousand Muslims, old believers, and Komi native religious believers who are forced to live in a small segregated communities and are discriminated against in such innocent acts as crossing the street. The law must not tolerate this. The Soviets, both local and national, will legislate against these injustices immediately. Well, there you go. An ultimatum? No. Check. I've seen the way the, the tide's turning, comrade. There's no future in the past, but this one's with you. Uh, there is one with you. Well, I'm glad you're, you've seen the light, comrade Andropov. You'll need to have, forgive me for my disbelief. You served in Sus, as Suslov's attack dog for years. How can I trust you? Andrei shrugged. He expected... Oh, my apologies. Uh, the suspicion, and he had come prepared. From within his overcoat pocket, he withdrew a small pocketbook and held it out to the woman. She, as she opened it, her eyes widened, and Yuri could not help but smile. All of your party's dirty little secrets. The things that surely turn the party against him if they somehow leaked. 
on Comrade Andropov. I have a feeling this will be the start of a very beneficial friendship for both of us. I hope so, Comrade Bukharina. I hope so. Almost there, my friends. End of party of Directive A227. Chairman Wun Bukharina has passed Party Directive A227 to go into effect immediately. The Directive is a wide-ranging directive in effect that makes the legislature by camera. The Congress of Soviets has had more power moved to it, and the way it is staff has been changed. Local municipalities will be sending representatives that will make up 50% of the Congress, while trade unions hold the other 50% of the seats. This move also weakens the power of the Presidium, as a large amount of its authority and power has been handed over to the Congress of Soviets. While Orthodox marxist leninists oppose this move, many Bukharinists support his president as an extra forward, as more now powers vested in the people than before, all to power to the Soviets. Good, good, good. It's probably going to be a bad idea, but go and do this. Seven twos, all the way. Make yourself stronger. And then the stars are risen. The reformist faction is once was once relegated to the margin margins of internal party politics. Its voice was silenced by orthodox suppression, relentless attack from within party ideological platforms, no longer are dissident voices suppressed. All oppressed may cry free. The reformists are no longer the coalition of the rising stars they once were. It is a ruling strand of the party. The orthodox faction are now the one sideline. With the rapid rise of power comes far more responsibility. This faction, now much of the party, must seize the general secretaryship and begin talks to reform a formal government to rule the republic. We may only hope to keep our ideals as fi we finally take reins of power. Good. 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 Out of the Soviet Union becomes our leader. For realsies. How are we losing here? Ah, because we're very, very weak. That's why. Can I spend... Oh, yes. Let's spend it before they can take it, so. Equipment all the way. Yeah, I mean, we're extremely weak. I mean, these wars are extremely taxing. Stars are risen. The resignation of Mikhail Seslov. The Bureau of... Facilitate his resignation. Uh, oh, if you'd like to read about better agriculture methods, please go right ahead. For this bread, we thank thee. Enemies, oh, okay, so we actually did win. That was really, really bad for us. Holy crud. Really, really bad. Antunin? Good. We are really lacking a lot of stuff here. Holy crud. But militia's garbage, so get rid of that. But we should be able to integrate these guys very, very soon. And stars are risen. Um, look at that. We actually look at that manpower. Holy crap. Facilities resignation. Or Bureau of Ideological Analysis. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what we should do. It seems like we should facilitate his stuff. Hmm. Resignation. Well, I'm not sure what we want to do. So, but I kind of want to do this one because you get more political power, though. Sin saying cure is a peculiar word. One might argue, in fact, that the role of a sin cure simply does not exist in Marxist thought. After all, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. What harm does a so-called useless job bring if each man is entitled to his needs? That is not to say Seslov is receiving a sin cure as harmless as that would be. In fact, he is to be promoted. A man of his stature should not be relegated to bureaucratic work and party squabbling. A new bureau has been created of which he is ahead. This bureau, the Bureau of Ideological Analysis, will be the one in which Seslov has the sole power to resolve contradictions between the party platform and establish Leninist doctrine. There is a very real possibility that this bureau may potentially influence some facets of Leninist doctrine in the coming years. It may even lead to some dis suggestions offered to the Congress of the Soviets. Truly marvelous. Or we can do this one. Eh. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to encourage him to resolve or resign. In the past, Soslov had a purpose. He was the glue that kept the party together, a popular figure who nevertheless stayed out of the spotlight. However, one must admit that he is staunchly, staunchly orthodox. His entire career was dedicated to advancing a certain form of socialism, a certain sort of which often came into conflict with Bukharina's brand. But if, frankly, Soslov stands in the way of true liberation. He finally, Soslov is perhaps a little too adept. If he is kept in positions of power, there is little telling uh, what he will do to correct the course of the party and expel Bukharina from it. Soslov has one, final one fatal flaw. He no longer has a power. We will send a few party envoys and encourage him to resign. Of course, He's not obligated to, per se. But, a couple comments, which we are finally getting to. Uh, so, next time, play as Selena. Uh, we might. We'll see about that. With the Finns, only demand Onega, as well as... Yeah, last episode was just nothing but musical chairs, so... Uh, across the aisle. During a rare, quiet moment within the Congress of the Soviets, Yekaterina Furtseva stood up and walked across the aisle. The ultra-visioners began to protest as she exited their section and stood next to Bukharin supporters. Buk Bukharina supporters applauded, albeit cautiously, as Furtseva began to speak. Or Furtseva. Comrades and fellow com members of the Congress of Soviets, I hereby renounce my any ties I held once to the ultra visionaries and throw my support behind Bukharin's government. Her vision for socialism is a true successor to their father's Soviet Union, and I will not stand by and let Zidana's reactionary tendencies lead a revolution astray. I feel that. 
For Seva repeated, repeatedly glanced at Zadanov as she spoke, even though he's dead. I feel that Bukharina's awareness of the oppression that many citizens of the former Soviet Union face is crucial to our movement's survival. Who, women, Komi, Tatars, and all the other marginalized groups within the shattered Union must become true members of the revolution. We must embrace them with open arms and not shun them for not being Russian. Zadanov's followers would rather distract the proletariat with flashy ideas and impossible goals than aware of the working class's true struggle. That is why I'm proud, both as a woman and a member of the revolution, to support Bukharina's just vision for the future. With her speech concluded, Furtseva somewhat nervously sat down, still glancing at Zidane's ultra visionaries across an aisle. Now her new allies also watched her nervously, unsure if she said what was like what she truly believed in. For now, this was a positive series of events for, for Bukharina's government as long as they remain wary of the deception. Furtseva seems to be understand who will finally lead Russia into the future, and we shall end this episode with. The West is ours. Despite all the odds stacked against us, we have managed to bring all of West Russia under one banner, a feat not seen since the 50s. However, our conquests are glorious, wash swift, and we must devote our energies towards consolidating our new lands. We must ensure that Perma is scourged clean to the Brotherhood, that the last ROA soldiers are captured, and most importantly, we must end the lawless present in our lands. It will be a difficult task, but one that is necessary, and we cannot afford our state to be on the brink of total anarchy, and we shall end with the resignation of Mikhail Soslov. I wonder what ever happened to Soslov. One minute he's carefully managing party affairs, and then the next minute he's resigned and disappears overnight. What do you think happened, sort of game? You think he was killed? Not like any of the leadership seems to care about that matter. Some seem suspicious, do you know? Or maybe <clears throat> Soslov was just done with politics and just wanted to go live in some nice village commune out in the country. A guy like Soslov willing to retire? Yeah, right, Vlad. I'm starting to think discussing that what happened to disappeared people isn't the brightest idea. You know, Sergey, I'm inclined to agree. Let's leave the politics to the people who do politics. Yeah, us soldiers aren't paid enough to worry about this kind of stuff. How strange, but if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will rebuild Komi in the West Russian, uh, Portion and begin pushing east. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.